Hello guys and welcome back to the Don Madoff channel. How are we all doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. And today we had a barnstormer of a game, a much more of a chess game than I'd say an advert, to be honest with you. And it was Liverpool 1, Manchester City 0. And obviously, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, oh wait, I've got a little uh Oh, I'll just leave it. I've got I've got an overlay oh. that does take over this, but please subscribe to the channel, please like and comment below what you thought of the game. Cal. I'm obviously joined by you, and you know the the, the our day de- your debut on this channel was us talking about Liverpool and sort of how poor you were, I guess, in a nutshell, weren't it? And how yeah, sort of yeah. uh, sort of you were sort of starting really slowly, and obviously I can see by your smile right now <laughs> that it's gone quite well today. But before you guys also haven't, me and Cal have got a. Talk Nonsense podcast, haven't we? We've got a podcast that's on Spotify and it's also on YouTube. It's on going on this channel. It's also going on our other channel. But obviously, chat, uh, Cal, uh, in general, what did you think about the game today? Oh. <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> no, uh, listen, if you're talking beforehand, obviously, I think I'd speak for every Liverpool fan where there was a real sense of dread and I've never really experienced it before where a whole fan base is trying to clamour together to get everybody on board to the fact that this could be a really ugly day for the club. At Anfield, you know, we've got this incredible record at home uh, with fans, obviously with the COVID season being a bit different, but um, the record that we have with the fans in the crowd and yeah, so beforehand I was obviously, I was terrified. I can't lie. I was in a really bad place before this game and a lot of my friends who support Liverpool were as well um, going into it. But there's a, I think the thing that Anfield has and it'll always have is uh, when it comes to this, backs against the wall, it takes you straight back to Barcelona, 3-0 down in the Champions League. When everything seems to be against Liverpool and you have this big, massive fixture mm. at Anfield that could go wrong, you always go back to the fact that it's at Anfield I think that might just be what got us over the line today. But yeah, obviously, delighted. I can't get a grin off my face, obviously. <laughs> but um, yeah, absolutely made up. I'm sure we'll go into the actual game itself a bit yeah. later. But absolutely brilliant. Buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. Yeah, I think most people, I think I think Haaland was 1-2 to two away at Anfield mm. for just a score. And I think I've never seen that in my lifetime on, on, a, on, a, on a betting website. Um, especially Anfield, Jesus, that's insane. But I think what I've written down here, Liverpool usually up for the massive games, like you say, uh, especially with Klopp. You, you talked about the Barcelona one, even predating that one, the Dorman one, mm. you know, the one where Lovren scored late on. And I think I put that as as a, a sort of the biggest plus that Liverpool have right now. You had the refresher against Rangers and obviously, but I did say that City obviously were looking as good as ever. And with Haaland up front, whether or not he's sort of stat padding a little bit or not is to be debated. But he scored 15 goals in eight games. He can't, he can't deny that he is an absolute focal point in the team, and he is scary. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think, yeah, I think yeah. on our on our Twitter account, we put the you put. I think I did, well, I didn't. You put the white flag out, just <laughs> almost yeah. like jokingly <laughs> surrendering. But do you think the fact that obviously you beat Rangers seven one, granted Rangers aren't great, probably a ch- lower championship team, and the mm. fact that City drew nil nil against Copenhagen couldn't couldn't get a goal there, do you think that affected the game at all? I think um, I wouldn't go as far as to say that um, Copenhagen's you know the result with Copenhagen and City had much of an effect on today's game, but I definitely would say that the Liverpool Rangers game did. Um, looking at that Liverpool Rangers game after today, obviously see Mo Salah scores the the winning goal today and has a few chances. He looked electric from from the get go today. And you look at the Rangers game, and like you say, I, I watched both Rangers games. I was lucky enough to go to Anfield to watch um, the first game, uh, but both times I thought they are such a poor team. And I'm really sorry if anyone who follows the podcast supports Rangers, but no, I I really did think that they are, you know, no threat. And obviously they scored first against us in in the away leg, which is, you know, granted fair play to them, but really a team that, no, I don't think you should be taking 
too much from, from getting a victory from. But obviously, winning 7-1, you've got to take a little bit from it. And then looking into the scorers, obviously, you get Darwin on the score sheet, which is brilliant. Bobby Firmino continues his form. But the big one for me was Mohamed Salah scoring that hat-trick in quick succession away at Ibrox. Um, the way that his season's been going so far has been so lackluster and really, you know, not to the standards that we expect from Mo Salah. And to see him score that, you think, right, he's he's firing fit, he's ready to go against City and we can unleash him and hope for the best. Because, you know, going into this fixture, I, I, I've put on our TikTok, on our podcast TikTok about, I, I've we'll been watching, follow, listening way. to talk sport all week and they've been saying, could be six, could be seven. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly, yeah, exactly, and yeah. so, so all week we've been preparing for the worst, really. But having a really confidence-boosting result against Rangers uh, in a tough group, to be honest, uh, in the Champions League, yeah. Mohamed Salah scoring that hat-trick is so crucial for us. I think the draw with Copenhagen, we can't really read too much into that. Harlem was rested for this game, which is you know makes complete sense. That's no slight on Pep or Man City or any of the tactics. But um, So I wouldn't look too deep into the Copenhagen game, but I think the Rangers game did us wonders, really, with them. Um, just with Mohamed Salah getting the the goals that he needed and the confidence to you know get forward and get into them positions, and I think it showed the manager as well that in in this new system that we have now without Mane, so we can't go for the traditional four three three. I think Salah needs to be in that central area, and obviously yeah. he proved today again against the toughest opposition you could possibly come against that he's the right man to be there in that central position whenever it comes, because he could have got a couple today. And obviously, he got the vital goal, which that's fine. I'm okay with that. But, you know, you look at the situation, the Edison save. And yeah, so I think the Rangers game is more, you know, has a bit more of an edge to this. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't read too much into the Copenhagen one, but the Rangers game definitely did a wonders for Mohamed Salah's confidence. And it proved that today. Yeah, I think, I think to put... A nutshell on it, I think the Rangers game was a real refresher. I think it was a real sort of, um, you needed to just kick the cobwebs out of the sort of, is, I, I see it as like, you know, when you play golf too much during a season and you sort of sort of tinkering in a tiny bit, tiny bit, tiny bit, you just need a bit of a break, come back and you're a little bit better, aren't you? So I think the fact that City did play their midfield three, all of the Copenhagen game, maybe made a bit of an edge to the game a little bit, That, but we're sort of splitting hairs, aren't we? It's, they're clearly good enough to play two games in a week. I mean, most teams are. Yeah. But obviously, we'll go into the lineups now. I think these are the lineups right here. As you can see, Alisson in goal, obviously. Robertson, Van Dijk, Gomez, and James Milner will go on to that one. Uh, Fabino and Thiago with Jota, Salah, Elliot, and Firmino for Liverpool. Obviously, for Manchester City, we've got Edison Cancelo right back with Walker injured. Stone's injured as well. Kanji coming in, maybe looking a bit naive in this game. You could say a little bit. Uh, Diaz, Ake, who's a sort of a makeshift left-back, sort of centre-back usually. Gundogan, uh, never can say his name properly. Gundogan. Uh, how, uh, I think anyway, it's like well, Gundogan, yeah. Yeah, Gun yeah. Uh, Rodri, De Bruyne, like you said, M3 played it against Copenhagen. Bernardo Silva, Haaland and Foden. So... In terms of lineups, Cal, like obviously, Hen no Henderson, no Nunes, no Canate, um, and Milner at right back. That obviously will will quickly just a quick point on this one, obviously, because Trent was on the bench. Do you think the fact that Milner and Gomez on that right hand side instead of Matip and or Canate and and Trent was a good good call, or do you, in hindsight, obviously, it probably will be. But do you think obviously at the time it was a bit of a worry, weren't it? Definitely. I think um, I speak for, again, all Liverpool fans where we love James Milner. We'll always love James Milner. He's, he's put a shift in from the moment he joined this club on a free transfer. Um, but when you see his name in a big game like this in 2022, you start you do start to worry. But what I will say in, in Jurgen Klopp's defence is he didn't have too many options to go for today. And I think um, looking at a couple of tweets from uh, Sky Sports reported that Fabinho would be playing centre-half. And uh, Milner would be in the big midfield and Joe Gomez would be at right back. And I was sort of thinking, would I rather risk having, you know, an older lad 
in James Milner in the midfield or at right back. You know, we could cover him if Joe Gomez is next to him. Joe Gomez has the speed. Uh, he's a very good centre half. Uh, having him next to him at right back might be a little less detrimental than putting James Milner in a really stacked Man City midfield and hoping to win the game in that sense. So I think it was a really good call from Klopp actually to put Milner at right back uh, with Trent just coming back from injury, of course, a week early as well. So didn't I can't imagine he wanted him to play too many minutes today. Obviously, he came on towards the end. Um, so I thought. Looking at it, you, you do get a bit, oh, Christ, that doesn't look too good on paper. But the way the game panned out, listen, James Milner has his flaws, of course he does, but that's only with age because brilliant footballer, does everything you want him to do, but age has crept up with him a little bit. But today, mm-hmm. you put him in that position, you have Joe Gomez next to him with the cover, that provides cover. I thought I'd like to really point out as well, uh, Harvey Elliott on the right of that midfield, helping out Milner at the back. And also Fabio Carvalho, but Harvey Elliott for the majority of that game. He did today a Jordan Henderson, a prime Jordan Henderson performance um, of helping his right back and helping in that defensive area. I genuinely think that Harvey Elliott's biggest positives today actually came in the defensive area. He was brilliant going forward as well. He really had a go, could have had a few chances as well going forward. But yeah. his biggest thing for me was taking the ball off, off midfielders and really helping out his right back in James Miller, who, who probably needed it a little bit. So, yeah, you look at the team on paper, you think, Ooh, we might struggle a little bit here against a team that haven't lost this year. But, you know, hard work, due diligence, and yeah, we've got the results. So, it's it's one of those things. You Obviously, you look at it, you think, well, could it be this, could it be that? It all depends on the day, doesn't it? Exactly, and I think the fact, like like you say, you've got Harvey Elliott on the right of them side, and, and Mo Salah being in the centre, obviously being a key asset to Liverpool, I think that him being out on the... That obviously isn't the right formation, is it, for Liverpool? I think that it was a 4-3-3, weren't it? I think... Pretty much, Liverpool, yeah. Yeah, and I think that Harvey Elliott was on the right of the centre mid. Basically mm. where Fabinho was, and Fabinho was in the middle, whereas... Um, uh, wait, Salah was on the right, wasn't he? I forgot that wrong. Yeah, I've... no. So I, th- I think an interesting thing I was speaking to me. I watched the game with me with my dad, and uh, we were talking about how it was interesting that in attack it seemed to be uh, a four four two four, but then yeah. when it came to the defensive line, you know, he was dropping back, and Harvey was coming back into a three. Yeah. So I think that's a tactical, you know, a plus from Klopp today. Something obviously they've worked on, and no coincidence. But yeah, it was it was definitely. I think the commentators on Sky really. You know, pronounced it as well because not many people. I don't think anybody knew what we were really doing. Obviously, our team did, but um, they were saying well, we're not sure if it's a four-two-three or if it's a four-two-four. But I think mm. it was in transition, which was really interesting, and I think it helped us to win the game today. Yeah, and we'll quickly go on to the sort of first half. It, not, not much really happened. I think I, I mentioned the fact that, that we'll we'll go on to this sort of formation here. Like you said, um, uh, what number is Harvey Elliott? Sorry, uh, Harvey 19. Elliott is 19. So 19, he's, he's over on that right-hand side. Like you say, as you can see him there. So this is the first half, sorry, it's, by the way, average positioning. And uh, like you said, Harvey Elliott sort of covering that right-hand side where Jordan Henderson would have a bit further on, like mm. um, sort of sort of five. But uh, obviously Milner is well, there as well uh, on the right-hand side. And then... What you've got there is the the sort of the sort of leadership of of Liverpool in the sort of um, formation in the first half, like and and the isolation of of Haaland up front, where um, number forty seven uh, Foden and uh, number where is he number seventeen yeah seventeen seventeen is 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 the De Bruyne they're so far apart from him, mm. and as you can see, Jota and, and, and Thiago the number six and number twenty covering um Kevin De Bruyne on this sort of number 17 role and then you've got and then you got Firmino and Salah going into Haaland sort of territory blocking that sort of outlet then you've got Rodri Diaz and and Ake who 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 Liverpool sort of allowed to have the ball rather than um Haaland and uh, De Bruyne and, and Foden and I think that the front three really did allow them three to have the ball rather than their sort of normal press that they had they still had the impressive press in the second half, which we'll go into in a second, but I think the first half was a bit more of a chess game, and that, and that sort of showed it with the sort of defensive outlet going mm. in packs, going in units. Obviously, you got Van Dijk and Gomez at the back as, as a sort of a sort of an anomaly, but as you can see, they're all 
all sort of like you've got them five there on the left hand side and the three on the right hand side. And I think it's a, a clear indication that Klopp has used his players to his best ability once again. And I think that he's using them to his he's showing, listen guys, people have got doubt over me. You shouldn't have doubt over Klopp ever. And I think the the sort of the amount of um that Klopp has with his team versus Pep indicates how much more of an impressive coach he is compared to Pep. To be honest with you, I think that's a bit... It's not. It's a bit of a calm take, I'd say. It's not more of an outlandish take, but um, well, especially with a Liverpool fan, but with with the amount that Liverpool have compared to Manchester City and how much... How sort of one-dimensional City were at times today sort of showed how well Liverpool played. Um, so we'll go into the second half, Cal. A half time, though, how did you feel? No, no. Um, and I, I sent a text to me. My missus wasn't too well, so she couldn't come and watch it with us today, uh, sadly. But I sent her a text and I was like, we're doing really well here. And obviously the <laughs> possession and I think, I don't, I'm not sure, I think shots on target were even, but looking at shots and, you know, the way things were going stat-wise, if you were just watching the game via stats, you'd be like, oh, City at it again. But, <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, speaking to my dad and I thought, we're doing really as as it goes to play against the Man City team. How man, how Man City are this season? The juggernaut that they are. I was um, I was fairly happy with how the first half had gone, and then um, you know you look at possession things like this. But our possession was good, and we defended their possession brilliantly. And I think that was crucial today because I think the manager and the players all knew and they were all in complete unison that City are going to have a lot of possession today. That's yeah. a given and that's what's going to happen. What we need to do is when we can nick it off them, do so. And when we have possession, make the most of it. I'm not saying keep hold of the ball for a long time because that's not what you're going to do against City. That doesn't happen. No team can do that and that's a credit to them. Um, but when we get the ball, make something happen that might, you know, shiver a few timbers with them and, and try and get them a bit worried, get them a bit rattled. And I think we did that brilliantly today because I think what we might have lacked this season, as, as much as, you know, you can talk about tactics and that we've been lacking in certain areas, what we have also lacked is a bit of um, a bit of bravery in a sense of give them a little, you know, we're, yeah. so, we're so nice right. and polite. You want, you we pick players up. Better. Yeah. You want leadership. You want someone to just like get it by the scruff of the neck, and, and we talk about like how how I don't want to get back to it, but how gammon the thoughts are. But you want you want a little bit of that. You want sort of a bit of a guttural sort of feeling. You want the sort of ball winning centre midfielder. You want a sort of a person who doesn't a no nonsense sort of decision. And I think that Liverpool did show that today, like you said. Exactly. Yeah, and I think um, <laughs> you know. I'd, Anthony Taylor for me was having an all right game until when just before the clock sending off. Um, and then I feel like the game did sort of lose it a little bit at that point. And obviously, you know, we were doing okay at that point, so it wasn't too bad. But, um, you know, the Thiago tackle was a bit woof. But just, just seeing our players today, the biggest um, release for me was seeing our players. Even even Mo Salah, he got fouled numerous times, didn't get the, the decision. But, you know, giving a bit after it, pushing the yeah. players. Andy Robertson pushing Bernardo Silva, saying, get out of the way. And, you know, it's it's something that even when we won the league, um, people use s Housery for Andy Robertson, but uh, for the Messi yeah. thing in the, in the Champions League semi-final, but... It's I exactly think what, what we have been is we've been a very nice team though yeah. over the years. Even when we won the league, we were a very nice team. We were in the Fair Play Award a lot of times. And what I liked about today was we was a bit nasty with it as well. And mm. not in a way where the referee had to get involved. Uh, and we'll talk about Jurgen Klopp sending off, which I've got a really oh yeah. No, really. Be in my bonnet for that one. But okay. um we'll talk about that later. But what I really liked was that we had a bit of fire in our bellies today, something that we've been lacking in recent weeks, which I think might have got us over the line against a couple of the draws that we've had recently. So, yeah, just a pleasing insight yeah. to see them doing that. So, obviously, 
like I said in my notes, Salah should have scored Edison save. I'll just go through the quick notes quickly in the second half. Like I'll just quickly brief it. Uh, fold and goal. Two hands, maybe? Nope. It was a foul on Fabinho. We'll talk about that. It's a definite foul, like I say. Mm. Just hit the bar in the second half. The the second half, by the way, first 10 minutes was a lot better than the first half. Like I say, it was just a chess game the first half. The, um, it was massively open. Holland had a chance, but it was a good save by Ellison in the 63rd mm. minute. And then Sal scored. Uh, Allison uh, quickly up to Salah with an assist and a counter attack, a Cruyff turn almost esque against uh, Cancelo. By the way, unbelievable goal! Beautiful. Um, it was restricted uh, re- restricted service to Holland throughout, throughout the game, which is a key uh, thing that I think Jurgen Klopp had. Um, heated ending, Klopp sent off. Nunes looking naive, I did say, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, but. Um, and then I think I said I said Joe Gomez man of the match, and then obviously they gave it in the end, which makes me feel like a bit of a fraud. But I just quickly went through them. The folding goal I think was the first key incident in the second half. Um, yeah. Obviously, Sky. I mean, for some we'll, we'll just it's, it's such an obvious point. It was a foul. That that's it. That's that's it, isn't it? Well, I think um, <laughs> just touching on that for me, I. It's, it's so strange. I was watching it, like say, with my family, and uh, I saw as I was leaving to go to the toilet. Believe it or not, uh, I, I was leaving the room, and I saw the foul on on Fabinho, where Harlan ripped his shirt and just ripped it onto the floor. It's like foul. So then I went to the toilet, and then came back, and obviously heard that, that they'd scored. So I was like, oh Christ! And um, looked at the replay. I hadn't even seen. You know, obviously, it's the same passage of play, but I saw that Alisson had the two hands on the ball. And then, so I was like, oh, they'll disallow it for that. Don't worry. It's not a goal. Um, and then he goes to VAR. So I'm thinking, yeah, good logic. Well done. They're going to chalk it off for that. <laughs> um, and then it's nothing to do with that. So they look at this foul on Firmino, which in fairness, I was like, well, I thought it was a foul in real time. Micah Richards after, by the way, uh, when they were running, cooling down the game afterwards. Uh, he did say that he thought it was really soft, and I thought no. he said it, he said in slow motion it always looks worse. And I think I understand that point to an extent, but the reality is, when have you ever seen a goal, a foul, anything on a football pitch that doesn't get slowed down afterwards? It that is part of the game. They replay it and they look at it as it is, and as it is, is in a slow motion. The things that they miss with the naked eye is what they see in slow motion. So that's why it looks mm. worse because you see more in slow motion. You see exactly what happens. For yeah. me, they spent about fifteen minutes on Sky Sports after. Yeah, and they don't the need to, like, like we say, mm. we're, we're sort of debating the same point. And, and to be honest with you, when you when you said that they're going to do it in slow motion, I thought you were going to get the point where I do get the fact that Mick Richards says that it's slow motion because sometimes fouls aren't fouls, but when you put them in slow motion, they are. But this one mm-hmm. was a foul, even in real life. Yeah, but it, even in slow motion, yeah. it's a foul. Like so, his point get his point is valid, but not in this one because it's a foul anyway. Exactly. Anyway, the, ne- the next one is obviously obviously the two hands. It's a bit of debate because it's, it's a bit that's a bit like the handball sort of rule. What did he have two mm-hmm. hands? Did he not? It's a difficult one. But anyway, it was a foul, so it's irrelevant at that point. Uh, Salah's goal, obviously, um, came from a free kick, didn't it? Yes, so City had yeah. a free kick, launched it into our box, and uh... well, Allison basically punts it up like a uh, a first kick in an in a, in a uh, NFL game. Yeah. Somebody's going to say NBA NFL game. Punts it forward somehow. Salad as a cross turn as a first touch, which by the way is people miss out in that fact what a touch that was mm. um people say he's he's, he's <laughs> gone uh, gone off a cliff but my god today he, I, if gomez wasn't going to get them out of the match i think salah would have uh, counter basically a counter attack and then salah not not making the same mistake twice slots it yeah. forward obviously you were elated by that is there any there's nothing much to say about that point is there other than the fact that what a what a kick by Edison, what a turn by Salah and what a goal. Yeah, and I think it took me straight back to the Man United, the goal against Man United at Anfield yeah. when we won the league. Um, Alisson to Salah. He looks for it all the time. It, that is a, a 
a look that Alisson looks for every time. And when it's there, he'll go for it. Mm. Obviously, it doesn't work out every time. But that I, as soon as I saw that goal, I said to my dad, I was like, that is one of Mo Salah's best ever goals, that. And I think, obviously, in the height of the moment where you just really, everybody watching that game at the time just cared about the result, really. But when you look back next week, next That's year, it. whenever, you'll look back at that goal and say, that is such an incredibly hard goal to score. That is one of the best goals. I Can can't say enough him. about Mo Salah. You know, I've seen enough goals from him to... I've run out of words for him. I ran out of words from years ago. But you see that, you think, yeah, just absolutely sublime. And it was on all day, by the way, because he was electric today. There's been many a game where Mo Salah gets criticised for being a little bit, you know, not into the game, not too much involved. Today, he made himself involved. He was fiery. He was pushing people. He was angry. And then yeah. he made himself known as well. Brilliant goal. It's almost like he saw the headlines and thought, you know what? I'm sick of this now. I'm going to make myself... <laughs> The man, and he did. And I think that I don't Yet think many again. people, I don't, yeah, exactly. I think the fact that people, I think most people are saying he's not in the game because Klopp's pushing him out wide or Klopp's pushing him so far over there rather than it, him having a poor game. I don't think he's ever had a poor game. I think in for, for pundits and, and the like, I think it's just the fact that he's had, he's had so much. Great games. He's had a, an allowance of a few games where he's just been a bit quiet. Where he, you know, it's never his fault. But I think, I think this this Cruyff turn and people, if you've never, if you've not seen it so far, go and check it out on any anywhere, any platform. I think it has a sort of similar touch to Suarez's shoulder touch. I honestly think that it can't go, it can't go amiss with the compar- comparisons because it, in terms of first touches, with Cancelo, one of the best defenders in the world down your neck in such an important game, it has the sort of importance and the, the sort of quality that that goal has. And I think that it just goes down as... Because the, the, everyone's just going to see the finish, see the uh, Allison goal and not see that. I think that that point needs to be said more. <laughs> Definitely. I completely agree. So obviously next up we've got the um, the heating, heated ending. But obviously mm. Haaland was irrelevant could you say irrelevant I think the fact that City was so reliant on Hall in this game and so reliant on that one point where Klopp nullified De Bruyne and Foden a little bit less in the second half because it was such a such an open game because of the way that Liverpool wanted to do it in the second half they wanted to make it more intense and open it wasn't the fact that City were so I don't, I don't know I think Liverpool it was just a perfect strategy that they, they played and he didn't have that many chances. I don't think he had a clear cut one. Um, mm. do, do, I, I, I don't want to speak about Haaland again because I feel like I spent a spoke about him a lot on this channel. How perf- like how much of a robot he is. But do you think that this is the? I know it's Liverpool away, so it's the perfect sort of way to sort of game in terms of with Haaland do you think that obviously people see this game and they can replicate this or do you think that Haaland will go back to the way he was Um, simple answer straight back to I think he'll score probably a hat trick in his next game (laughs) he'll be absolutely fuming off this today Um, I think what we did what surprised me so much is you know as you mentioned there and um, you rightly mentioned on on our Twitter as well, nullifying De Bruyne. But Foden, for me, Foden was given, it was interesting, Foden was given a lot of time and a lot of space on the ball today. Yeah. Whereas Kevin De Bruyne barely got a minute, but he he made a couple of balls through as as expected. But for the majority, how Kevin De Bruyne usually plays, he was nullified and Erling Haaland was man-marked. And the thing, there was one, Point. Yeah, I think it was in the first half. I might be right. Um, yeah, I think it was towards the cop end. Uh, and Joe Gomez was just just once, and he was brilliant today. Joe Gomez. Don't want to say a bad word about him, but just one little lapse in concentration didn't backpedal. Erling Haaland, best strike on the planet, is stood behind him. Doesn't even jump because he doesn't know where anybody is around. A bit of lack of awareness, but Haaland obviously shoots over the bar, which is fine. He had a. A shot in the second half, but 
what I thought we did with Erling Haaland today was if he was going to have a chance, it wasn't a proper chance. It was a half chance and you had to make the most of what you were given. Uh, yeah. I was so proud of the team in that sense today. But uh, interesting that you mentioned Foden because for me, I feel like looking at it in hindsight now, De Bruyne and Haaland were the ones that we focused on. And I think the allowance was let Phil Foden do what he wants. We need to nullify these two guys. And I think we did that brilliantly with the, you know, letting Foden do what he wants. And, you know, he wasn't able to do it today. But the other two were obviously discussed as the biggest problem. And they were nullified. And, yeah, just a brilliant defensive effort, to be honest. So, yeah, I mean... When you go away to City, I think it'll be a different sort of game. Obviously, I'm not sure when that is. Um, it'll be after the World Cup, won't it? Obviously, but the, uh, the biggest point that you sort of alluded to before was the fact that it was a heated ending and Klopp was sent off. I think maybe going off what you said before, we might have sort of different views on it. So, how did how did you did you think Klopp was justified in being sent off, or was it a case of um, the referee getting it right? I just thought it was quite rash. I think um, Klopp said it himself. Uh, he was interviewed by Jeff Shreves afterwards and the first thing he pretty much said was it was a deserved sending off, which ended all my arguments, what I'd seen in the game. But I think looking at you know games in previous, if it's not too obvious and on camera and you know for the viewing public, I've, I've always felt that if managers are allowed to get yellow and red cards like players that it's got to be the same system as it is with players. And, you know, when the replay shown what Klopp actually did, I would argue that I've seen that enough times without any punishment mm. to say maybe it warranted Anthony Taylor stopping the game, heading over to Klopp, having a harsh word with him, or yellow doing card. exactly that and giving him a yellow card. For the fact that Klopp hadn't really had anything beforehand in the game... And then to be given a straight red for being up close and personal with a linesman for a decision that I think I think he even said that him and Pep had spoke on the touchline and agreed that, you know, some for City side as well, but that decision was a wrong one. And it was probably the most clear foul of the whole game, to be honest, on Mohamed Salah. And mm, for him okay. to not get that foul, I think he Klopp knows what he said. I don't, and nobody else knows what he said. But the linesman must have flagged up to Anthony Taylor that he said something inappropriate and he said it was a deserved sending off. So can't argue too much, but I do think the due diligence in that sense uh, should occur. And it's, mm. if they're getting the same cards as footballers, they should be treated in the same way when it comes to disciplinary as footballers for me. It's, it's whether they do get the same cards, isn't it? I don't know whether I've never seen, I've never seen a referee, uh, sorry, a, a manager get a yellow card. Yeah. So they, it must be nothing. Well, Klopp, in has, Klopp, Klopp has, in fact, I've seen Klopp get a couple of years. Right. Well, yeah, I think going off the, the highlights, he was aggressive to him, so probably should have yeah. deserved the yellow card. But yeah, yeah on, if you did that on the pitch, you'd only get a yellow card. So why, mm -hmm. you know, what's the difference be, between being there in the, the technical area? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. He must have said something happened. really yeah, bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much... For him to come out to Jeff Shreves and say, I deserved it, then he yeah. must have said something really bad. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. so it's fine. So what I think... Uh, I, was, I wasn't I was sure, so I did a bit of research after the game. I think it was a one-match ban, even oh, for a straight it. red card for a, for yeah. a manager. So We're West Ham on Wednesday night, not great, but it's better than a three-match ban. Oh, is it West Ham? So, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And obviously, last last points we'll go to we'll, we'll go to the league in a second. But who do you think your man of the match was? Oh, um, obviously it was all brilliant today. But I think it was one of the two centre halves for me today. So Joe Gomez got it via Sky. Um, but for me, Virgil Van Dijk with the clearance as well. From how people are talking about him lately, after a little bit of a bad run of form, for him to perform like that today. It just cements him yet again. And I, I love Joe Gomez. And I think maybe it would it'd help Joe Gomez a bit more to get the man in the match today. So I'm okay with him getting it. But for Obviously. me, I think if it was my choice alone, I think I'd give it to Virgil. 
yeah, obviously I've got the the, the the team sheet up there. And do you think it's the fact that because Van Dijk is so good, is yeah. it? Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. High that I think I think if if that... Joe Gomez matches Van Dijk, which he did today, yeah. then you've got to give it to Gomez because the standards set by Virgil are, are at that level where you know that's what's expected. So I think it was an expected performance from Verge after a bad run of form. Yeah, uh, and Joe just he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And he was brilliant at right back against Rangers, by the way, as well. So brilliant for Joe Gomez yeah, at this absolutely. point, you know, with, yeah. with Trent being up and down. And, you know, hopefully he might be able to get a good little run in the team. With If Canate is seriously injured, then who knows? Because we all, everyone at Liverpool loves Joe Gomez. He's been there for ages now. We love him to pieces and we want him to do well and he deserves that as well. Obviously, you've got, you've got West Ham next, then Forest away. Mm. Uh, West Ham not doing too well. And obviously, the fact, I'm guessing. Oh, it's this week, isn't it? It's midweek. Yeah, um, Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Man City, obviously, up in Brighton at home. Dortmund in the. Oh, they have Dortmund during the week. I'm guessing that you don't yeah. have. Yeah. No, 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 not this week. Okay, so you are. Look at Arsenal at the top, by the way. That is insane. We can go through that on the cool down that we have on our podcast, by the way. Yes. Um, the countdown, which I will click quickly, by the way. Click here. There we go. Hey, there <laughs> it is. That, I'll see you way. soon, Overlay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but obviously, we've got the league up here. Um, I've got the overlay on there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Arsenal clear at the top. Nine wins out of ten. Obviously going well there. Um, City three, four points behind at this point. You are in eighth place. Um, mm. Only three points off fifth now. Do you think because there is six well, is it, six points between you and Chelsea, do you think you'll make that up? Do you know what? I think a result like that today <laughs> makes the possibilities endless. And then um, we define our season with a performance like that today. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see us go on a really good run of form now, to be honest. And I'm, I'm sort of looking a little bit further up, to be honest. After, yeah. after that win today, just because it's so early in the season... And it's going to be such a strange season with the World Cup. There's not anything can happen. Um, and I've seen deficits like that before. And here's that 14 points. We were 14 points behind City. Uh, yeah, last indeed. Season, and, 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 uh, and, uh, you know, yeah. lost it by a fingernail last season. So I'll never write us off, ever. And I think a day like today, uh, for any Reds watching, they'll, they'll be reminded that we're often wrote off. And uh, days like today prove that we shouldn't be. And I think, you know what, for a, a commentator that I often criticise and think his best days are behind him, Martin Tyler today, uh, the ball was kicked off, upon kick off in the game, and his first words were, write Liverpool off at your peril. Ooh. And then well, Liverpool went on to win the game, which... You know, as you know, as a commentator, that's a brilliant first line for a little stat pad like that. So yeah. I think it's it's true though, in a sense of the way we are as a team. It's not a delusion thing, it's just the fact that the way that our manager has got us now, we can't be written off. And no. if you do, like Martin Tyler said, at your peril. And if you think we're gonna be an easy game, we won't be. So I'm not saying we're gonna win the world this year and do everything, but I think we're going to have a better season than many thought maybe this morning. After today. Yeah, and I think the fact that Arsenal are there for the first time in 20 years. Probably, um, yeah. City probably always going to be up there. Spurs are Spurs. Chelsea sort of going under the radar a little bit, but they, I think many people aren't suggesting that they could do that because of Potter, because they don't have mm. this like grandiose sort of Super League sort of... Um, manager, they have Potter there. I think that Chelsea are going on the radar. They didn't play well against Villa today. They got away with it basically through Apparently individual so, yeah. errors, individual errors through Mings and Martinez. I think Mings. Let's just leave that one there. We can talk <laughs> that on the uh, we can talk that on the uh, the cool down, can't we? Uh, but um, yeah, I think I think you will be definitely. If you're not fourth, it'd be close. Definitely. I think the fact that you are only six points off and you've had probably one of the worst, in quotations, 
starts to the campaign in mm, since Klopp was there probably is a good sign. Essentially, it shows that, that you have a very very strong team, and not many teams um, beat City, especially um, this City with Haaland up front. But mm. um, it's a good sign. And also, Cal, I would like to thank you for coming on this channel. Thank you for. <laughs> I will edit this one right now. <laughs> and this will be up tonight um, on the 16th. So is there any final words from you as a Liverpool fan? be a hell of a story if we won it, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> perfect. That's I'll leave you with perfect. that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely perfect. See you but on the cool down, brother. Absolutely. Thank you very much for being on this channel. I do appreciate everything that we've got right now. We've got the Budweiser in hand. Come Red. on! <laughs> I do like to keep it neutral, but uh, sometimes it cannot be that way. I'm obviously Never. not a football fan, but you know it's easy to get. I am. Broken. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought you on. Um, <laughs> but if you haven't already, guys, 40 minutes into this video, it's usually is a very much a long video for me right now. But I, you know what? Thank God it's not just me talking and rambling on and mumbling my way through videos. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please, if you can do that, be much appreciated. There will be a video on the Calendom podcast channel, the cool down, like we said, every every week, as well as a podcast main one that we have on Spotify and on the YouTube channel. We have just put out a peak VLC video that he has put on TikTok. Um, Cal, you're in charge of the TikTok mainly, and we have a TikTok account on there as well. We will speak with that on the cool down mainly. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, like I say, please subscribe, comment below, and cheers, guys. We will see you later. Cheers, guys. <laughs>